So starting this week and going to the end of the year, uh, both Greg and myself are going to be doing uh, weekly devotionals focused around uh, certain spiritual disciplines, uh, things such as prayer, uh, fasting, uh, scripture, worship, um, uh, meditation and solitude, just things to think about that how that scripture says, but then how can we implement them into our own life and and uh, grow spiritually with them and see you know what is what are the narratives what is uh, the New Testament command us you know what do the epistles teach us uh, just looking at scripture and how we can learn from from it and uh, learn about more about these disciplines and so the first one we're going to be looking at. Uh, today and the next couple of weeks as well too is prayer and the passage that we're going to be looking at is Matthew 6 uh, 9 through 13 and it's the very famous uh, Lord's Prayer from the Sermon on the Mount and if I were to ask you to recite the Lord's Prayer most people could probably do it and maybe they might uh, they might fudge a line or two, but for the most part, most people can typically recite the Lord's Prayer, at least the first half of it, um, stumble through a line or two, and then get to the end. But when we look at this prayer and how Jesus is teaching us to pray, uh, we see not only is it specifically what he's saying, uh, but there's a model of it. There's two aspects uh, to take away from this prayer. And the, the first part is the vertical relationship that we have with God the Father. Uh, he starts off by saying, you know, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we look at that vertical relationship that we have with God. Um, Jesus changes it up here in the, in the Gospel of Matthew here. And for the first time, we get God being called Father as opposed to uh, Lord God or God as it is in the Old Testament. This is the first time Jesus is changing it and saying, Father. Uh, the second part, uh, the second piece of this first part, hallowed be your name. So the word hallowed is just an old uh, English word for holy, or to be made holy, um, or being holy. And I like how John MacArthur says it here uh, in regards to this. Uh, for hallowed, it's to attribute to God the holiness that it already is, it always has been supremely and uniquely his. To hallow God's name is to revere, honor, glorify, and obey him as singularly perfect. And so he starts off with it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your name be worshipped uh, as, as you have rightly deserved to be worshipped. Um, when we think of the Ten Commandments, the first part of it is all about worshipping God and our relationship to him. And then second part of the, and then the next part of the first part is your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that all your purposes, all that you have decreed, have and will be carried out in heaven and on earth. And when we think about the Lord's, uh, when Jesus is praying in the garden, when he's saying, you know, not my will, but your will be done. Uh, he is distinctly uh, submitting to the Father and saying, it's not my will, it's not what I want, but what you want. And that's what this part of uh, the Lord's Prayer is doing. Not my will, but your will. Uh, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's the vertical part of the Lord's Prayer. The second part is the horizontal, which is our daily uh, routine, our daily life. Uh, and it goes, and we can recite the rest of it. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So that beginning of the second part, give us this day our daily bread, uh, forgive us our debts, um, in our daily life provide food, you, know, you alone are going to provide food and water for us, clothing, you know, everything we do uh, is all provided by him, nothing we do we earned on our own. Um, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Uh, forgive us of our sins and also uh, give us the means, the spirit. This is when you ask the spirit to give you the means to forgive those who have wronged us, who have hurt us. Um, you know, when you think about what Jesus does on the cross when he says, uh, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Um, 
that extending of mercy and forgiveness to others because God the Father has extended that to us. And then he wraps it up with, and lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Um, that in our daily life, in our daily routine, uh, we ask the Spirit to give us the, um, the ability to resist temptation, to uh, deliver us when those moments arise, whatever it may be, uh, that he would deliver us from those temptations and give us uh, the means and grace to, to be able to overcome those. And so when we look at this prayer, one of the things that we can see is, is that it's a model for those two aspects, the vertical and the horizontal. So I'd encourage you guys when you pray, whether it be in the morning or at night or in the middle of the day or all three, uh, whatever it is, to model your prayer and center your prayer around this. You can recite this prayer as a means to, to kind of springboard and, and go deeper into prayer. Or you can just think about these things that you start off vertical, um, thanking God, petitioning to God, um, that relationship, your personal relationship with Him, and then focus on the horizontal, that everything that you do, everything that I do, all comes from him uh, to extend mercy and grace to others and then to deliver us, uh, to help us through his spirit uh, to overcome temptation uh, in our daily routine. So that's what I would encourage you guys um, as you pray to think about those things, um, you know, and whether it be, like I said, in the morning or at night, midday, wherever time you take uh, to pray and uh, be alone with God, to, to think about that. And that Jesus here in this passage gives us a model to which that we can uh, aspire to and uh, model our prayer life after.